Welcome back to another beautiful, amazing, whatever you want to call it, video. We're back with Bible study with Brother Gio and Brother Jave. We did um the other half of John chapter one last week, and now we're doing John chapter two. We're either going to go through the full of John chapter two or do half of it. It just depends on how long the video goes, but we're going to get straight into it. We're going to start off with our prayer by Brother Jave, um, and the ending prayer is going to be by Brother Gio. All right. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you so much for another day that you have allowed us to see. And we pray now, God, as we go and see your word, that you will be with us. We pray, God, for revelation. We pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we pray, oh God, that iron will continue to sharpen iron. We pray that we will learn something today. And whatever we learn, we pray, God, that we will apply it to our daily lives. Be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good. So we wrapped up uh, chapter one with um, John speaking of spirit descending from heaven and resting upon Jesus after he baptizes him, right? And so now we go into uh, chapter two. So let's get right into it. It says, the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet to come. I wish somebody would talk to their mother like that. <laughs> Only Jesus could get away with that, right? <laughs> uh, his mother said unto the servants, <laughs> Whatsoever he hath unto you, do it. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were at there, and there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drank, drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. So we're going to stop there um, and just pause for a minute and just kind of discuss what's happening. Um. We, we can go really, really deep with this. The, we can talk about the historical aspect of it, of how they purified things, like the rock, almost like a Brita filter type thing. Um, but before before Javert or, or, or I open up our mouths with this question um, about what's happening, just give me your understanding of what's happening. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, so Jesus and his um, either servants or disciples, disciples, right? Eh? Disciples. Okay. Jesus and his disciples went to like a <laughs> wedding and they ran out of wine. And because oh. Jesus had the ability to be able to like make wine, his mother came to him to for him to make the wine and he made it out of water. Made it out of water. Um, it says a couple... I don't know if they call them jugs or barrels. Let me check. Yeah, yeah. some type of container or something. Yeah. Something to hold the, the wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was 10, and each one of them holds about, I think, like five gallons or something like that. I love these translations, but I don't even know how they come up with these things. But <laughs> it's like all I see in chapter 6, in verse 6, rather, says, and there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. And you telling me there's like five gallons. I don't, I don't know how they yeah. do it. 
So oh. my Bible is, is saying <laughs> I read each for the whole 20 to 30 gallons. Yeah, that's why I said that because, like, when I read the NLT, it said that the amount of gallon. I don't know how they translated that. So a firkin is a gallon? Because I'm saying it says two to three firkins. So if you said a firkin maybe 10 gallons then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That, that just might be it. I don't know how they translated that. I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, I mean, I knew it was some type of measurement. Just like, like we're the only people who use like miles per hour or or feet and inches. You know, what I mean, when you right. once across the seas, they use kilometers. You know, what I mean, so it's, we're we're the only people. It's just the U.S. is a little bit different. So I guess they use a different measurement system back then. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, so you're right. Any anything else you want to add? Did you have Jesus and his disciples with his mom? They're at a wedding. Um. And Jesus turns water into wine. So that, that's the basic understanding. What what about um, verses nine through through uh, through twelve? Like with the governor, what what he, what does he say? He makes a comment. Oh, so he made a comment about how like they usually save the good, well, the, like the best wine, um, at first, and then like you bring the lesser wine to the end. Like right. to the end of the party, mm-hmm. but w- when Jesus made that wine, it kind of like said had a significant to it because it wasn't supposed to come out at that time, but it ended up did and it just make the party better. All right. Okay. So we're starting. We're we're seeing some type of culture, right? Of we're learning a little bit about the culture of the people back then. Like if you're at a wedding, there's wine. And in the beginning, you bring all the good stuff, get very, get everybody all loose and happy and everything. And then you bring out the not so good stuff at the end just to finish it off. Right. Um, so that's like the surface layer of what we just read. And let's dig into the spiritual. Let's go down another layer. Is there anything spiritual that you can pull from this? Not that I could think of. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And 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 this is the reason for the study. This is the reason for the prayer in the beginning for the Holy Spirit to give us revelation because we can't see everything. Jave and I don't see everything right. in this chapter. Right. right. It's the Holy Spirit that allows us to see certain things, and then and in certain times within you know our lifespan. So. Um, just off the bat, Jay, like what's, let's go from verses one to 12. Like if you break it down verse by verse, like what's something that you see spiritually from the beginning? So let me go back to the beginning and, and address before the spiritual, just kind of painting the picture. Mm-hmm. Um, so wedding, weddings in uh, Jesus days, they, they were week long festivals, right? Mm-hmm. So we know weddings in our times, it's just a day, a couple hours and that's it. Mad money. But in Jesus' time, it was it was a week long, and not only was it a week long, but everyone that was in that village or that community was invited. Think about how much people that could be. Now think about our time now. Ooh. Where plates are so expensive, right? Per person, decorations, tux, dress, all of that stuff. So the entire Ooh. village um, was invited, and to refuse the invitation was a sign of disrespect. Right. And so not having enough wine um, at the wedding was also um, embarrassing. Right. It, it went against the laws of hospitality. So here is an opportunity now for Jesus to work a miracle, to respond to a need. Now, as Jill was saying, or even as you said, when I first read this, and I was like, what, what can I dissect from this? It's a mm-hmm. wedding. What, what, what much is there? And as Gio said, that's why we ask the Holy Spirit, right? Because he brings forth revelation. Um, the one thing I see, the conversation between um, Mary and Jesus. Uh, she has a need. She goes to Jesus. Um, I think spiritually, um, we have to have that trust in God. That when we're confronted with a situation, whether big or small, um, we know who to go to. Right? I think oftentimes we try A, B, C, D, E, F, and G first before we go to God. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yo, had you gone to him from the jump, the amount of time, frustration, maybe money you could have saved, 
it's crazy. So that, that's one thing that sticks out to me so far, just um, the trust that, that Mary couldn't figure it out, right? But she knew who to go to. She could have went to someone else, but she knew who to go to. Right? And she necessarily, as my, my Bible says, she probably wasn't necessarily asking him to perform a miracle. She just was asking for him to just help figure out the situation. But yet he uses the situation to draw people to believe in who he is. Isn't that crazy? At the wedding, right? Bro. Oh, yeah. At the wedding. Because, um, wait, wait. Because when I read this in LT, it said that um, in like chapter one, he did something that I don't remember exactly what he did, but it was kind of like, it kind of like showed people to kind of like believe in him more that like he's like able to like, um, have powers like that and when they did this when he did the wine a lot of some people wasn't surprised because like they already saw what God when well, not God what Jesus was capable of I don't remember exactly what he did in chapter one but when I when I read it in NLT his, it mentioned that okay Jesus just did a miracle in chapter one not a miracle but like something something that he did that like a lot of people was like like he got to be Jesus. I don't remember exactly what, but uh, John chapter one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John chapter one. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, let me look at that note real quick to just see if I was if I'm if I'm tripping or not. But the only thing that happened with Jesus is that he got baptized and the um the angel descended upon him, or the spirit descended upon him. Right. Oh, you mean when he was speaking to uh, one of the one of the disciples, he called him. He's like, I, I knew you. I saw you before you even came over to me. I think I need to talk about. And he changed uh, Simon's name to Cephas. Yeah, I think I see what he said. Um, yeah, I see what you're talking about. It's when he starts gathering all his converts in, chap in verse 35. Yeah, okay. yeah, that. Yeah. Not a miracle, but like, yeah, that. Um, I think is is key the point that Jay hit just now. Um, coming to God before anything, no matter the size of the problem, and I, um, there's another study that I'm that I'm I'm, t I'm doing right now, <clears throat> and in that study, I'm learning that we need to filter everything through God, like not take light of that scripture that says to trust in the Lord always right and lean not unto your own understanding i think everything bro even even your your youtube channel if you're looking for guidance on what to put out there to the public ask god and i think that he's clearly giving you direction because at your age you could easily easily be putting out content that has nothing to do with god there's so many other things you could be doing right now but for whatever reason Holy Spirit is telling you, young man, to put this content out, right? To build people up, to 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 motiv focus on motivation of speaking, right? So, I think that's really key that Mary knew to come to Jesus, right? right? Um. So that that's that's towards the beginning of it. I mean, uh, Jay, like, how how deep you want to go with verse four in terms of, um, woman. What have I to do with thee? My hour has not yet come. I mean, we can keep that high level and try to like. What What do you think he's talking about? My hour has not yet come, um, Ezra. Um. Uh, I think that probably. Oh, wow! Don't worry about it. If you don't get it, we just. I just want to just pick your brain and see how much you know. You know, don't no worries, no pressure. I mean, this is not a test. Um, um but. He, he he's referring to uh, when he's gonna be on the cross, right? right. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was about to say. It, it gotta be when he's ready to die, because when he's like, "My hours not here. come," like I'm guessing that. And so I want I want you to take note of this and, and remember this wine situation, this wine reference that he makes, so that when the hour does come, you'll see right. what he meant, right? Um. <laughs> But then on, on the on, and then the next thing I want to highlight, like Jay said, was how you can take something so insignificant 
as like a, you, you're running, like to them, it is so crucial, so important to be hospitable to your guests. Right. We run out of wine. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? There's no wine. People need Bugging wine. Out. We need, we got. And God was like, that's, that's what's so important to you. Like, don't, I'm, I'm focused on my work from, from, from the kingdom, my work from God. That's, that's what I'm focused on. I, I came here to do that, which the father has, has told me to do. But you know what? Holy Spirit spoke to me and now I'm going to do something that is going to blow your mind. I'm going to take something so small to me, but that you think is big and I'm going to make it to where it causes people to believe. I'm going to mm-hmm. perform, perform this miracle sign and wonder so that people can see me for who I am. Yeah. And, and to add to that, as well, you got your book, um, write this. Um, the Bible doesn't necessarily indicate that, that Jesus knew that they were going to run out of wine. But of course he knew because he knows everything. Um, he creates a situation for revelation. Right? And so in that situation, what, what was the revelation? What do you think the revelation was? Um, uh, the Holy Spirit talking to him. Okay. But, but what did he do in that situation? What was the miracle? He listened and um, turned the water into wine. Right. So he provided, right? And so... Even in this, this context, it's about wine for a party. Um, we can take that out and apply it to anything else, right? Right? It, it don't matter when you're down to your last or your little, or even when you run out, God will always show up right at the time and reveal to you that he is indeed Jehovah Jireh, right? The Lord who provides. And so that's something else. Um, I took away from that. So he creates a situation for revelation. So crazy, man. Like how God just jumped through the hoops to get us to see how much he loves us. It's like, yeah. like, like he 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 really gives off like like these thir- thirsty vibes, like he, you know, he, you're going hard for a girl, and you doing oh, any and everything. Like, like <laughs> this is really the life Jesus is about. Like, he really thirsty for us. It's kind of like what we were discussing last night, Jill, um, with um the whole um the whole Gideon situation. Yeah, yeah. it's it's I got it. I do the most to show us that, like, he's really about what he's talking about. Right? <laughs> he's about that life, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you, you you got water turned into wine, right? And uh, and this, like things like this, when God gives people revelation, this is how songs are birthed, right? You turn water into wine. All right. What's that song? Water you turn into wine. <laughs> The ashes we rise. This is how these songs come about, right? (laughs) So, um, so yeah, that that's that's what's happening right now, right? So we see Jesus performing miracles, um, for revelation, so people can see who he is, that he truly is the Messiah, right? And and he starts inward. He starts with his own. He starts with the the um the his disciples, the people who have already believed in him. Right. Um, and he clearly gave them a warning. It's like, yo, listen, if you he said it in chapter one, he says, oh, you think that because I knew who you were and I saw you over there doing what you were doing before you came to me, you think that's something? Stay tuned. I got more. And now he's being a man of his word. He's showing them that there's more. He's mm-hmm. showing them that there's more. Um, mm-hmm. the, but the people on the outside doesn't really they don't really understand what's happening. And that's sort of kind of the case for us, us as Christians. We get to see Jesus in a different light. But the people from the outside don't realize what's happening. They, they, they are unable to see things in the spiritual realm. They're blinded because by choice, they just choose to ignore the presence of the Holy Spirit, trying to draw them unto Christ. 
So the governor, uh, dude is drunk. He's like, yo, what he says? Um, he says, every man in the beginning brings forth the good wine when men are well drunk. He says, then that which is worse, they bring out at the end. But now you hold all the good stuff till now? Like, he, he's like, yo, this is some good stuff. Like, he, that's, he's just thinking about the wine. That's, that's what he's focusing on. Yeah. Um, and then verse 11 says, the beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana, Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him, right? So that's the end result. The end result is God shows us his glory and as a result, we believe in him. So, um, so after this, they then, so they, they go down to Capernaum he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. All right, so then we go to the next verse, uh, 13. It says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. So just real quick, Passover. Um, I would ask you if you know what that is, but I'm going to just get straight to it. So um, Passover was a... Uh, it's like a celebration or like a feast that they they used to honor what God had done for them in Egypt. So mm-hmm. when they were trying to get out of Egypt, um, Pharaoh would not let them go, right? Their mm-hmm. oppressors were keeping them hostage. And he, God did a bunch of things to Pharaoh, as you may already know, Ezron. But Pharaoh was like, nope, mm-mm, that, I'm not afraid of that. I'm not, I'm not. That's nothing, whatever. I see that every day. But he did this one significant thing, and he caused he he caused every, I think it was babies, Jave, I think. I think it was like children. Yeah. I think it was children. He passed, so the spirit of death passed over Egypt and, and killed. Was it children. boys specifically? Or was that I think anyone? so. I think so. I'd have yeah. to look, look at it. But I know I know pretty much the spirit of death passed over Egypt. And it and uh, the nation, the nation of Israel at the time, the Israelites, they were in Egypt. So you got the spirit of death passing over, killing children in Egypt. But the spirit of death didn't kill anybody within the nation of Israel. He passed over them, and hence you have the celebr- you have the holiday or the celebration of Passover. Okay, so that's where that comes from. So now we're in that time. Um, similar to like how we how we like celebrate Resurrection Sunday, or we call it Easter Sunday. Same thing. It's just a, a something that we use to be reminded of God's grace towards us. So right. verse thirteen says, "And the Jews' Passover was at hand." Right. So they, it's in this at the time of the year they're celebrating it, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. <clears throat> I want you to uh, keep an eye on every time we talk about Jerusalem, Jesus goes up. So we'll look more into that. So just kind of keep an eye out for that. It says that Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen. So they're in the temple. They're selling oxen, sheep, doves, and they're shifting. They're changing out money. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes, money, and overthrew the tables. Okay, so yeah, go ahead, Joe. Interrupting, but this is a situation where, like, he went into the church and he saw that every single thing that the church stands for and what God wants to happen in church, it was the opposite. They, they was basically having a um market in here, <laughs> and yeah, they're using the Lord's house to everything and kicked right. everything to the side and all that. Yep, yep, yep. That's oh, exactly yeah. what's happening. Um, so where are we? Uh, okay. And so verse 16, and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. We won't go too deep into that, but that was prophesied in the, uh, what do you call it, the Old Testament. Um, So then answered the Jews and said unto him, what sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? And Jesus answered and said unto him, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, forty and six years was this temple in building, 
and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body, not the right. actual building. Right. So real quick, God did a bunch of stuff in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, these people were not, they weren't getting it. They just did not understand how much of a relationship God, how bad God wanted to be in a relationship with them. And so he sent Jesus to actually display this before their eyes, to fulfill everything that he wanted them to do themselves just with, through the relationship that he tried to create with them. So he said, you know what? Let me send somebody down there to show you what it looks like. And so this is what Jesus is doing, right? Um, and so he's talking about destroying the temple. You know that scripture, your body is your temple? Yeah. Right? So he's talking about, God's talking about his body that will be destroyed. Okay? And that's the reference that he's making. Um, Jay, you want you got something to add? No, no. You hit it right on the point. Um... All right. So verse 22 says, When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. So you see, it's like everything they learned in the Old Testament that was passed down from generation to generation, they're actually seeing it being manifested before their eyes. Right, right. Actually seeing Jesus fulfill all those things. Um, and what, what's the end result? Again, it causes them to believe, just like we just read in verse 11. They yeah. believed on him, verse 22, and they believed. They believed the scripture. <clears throat> so verse 23 says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, Many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man. All right, so um, there's another holiday, the Feast of Day. We'll talk more about that later. I know there's interest of time. Um, but pretty much Jesus is performing these miracles, right? He's coming out, he's doing this thing, and it's causing people to believe on him. Yeah. Um, but it says Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Very, very important there. Like, uh, uh, why, why, why do you think Jesus decided not to commit himself to them? Because he knew that, like, he know like the heart of men and know like how we could easily just change up and just act like. Like he wasn't there, kind of like what the um um like did when God was leading them out of Israel. Like God kept showing them these like miracles, like I can do this, I can do that, but then they end up making um an idol of God and other and do other stuff along the way. So like he know they could easily just be like, you know what, that glass over there, that's God, that's Jesus. So he knew he know he could easily just switch up. Right, right. To, to add to that, um, these are some of the same people that would eventually yell, crucify him. Right? Same people. I believe, I believe, I believe, but eventually going to be the same ones yelling, uh, crucify him, crucify him. So um, one thing that's important to know is it's easy to believe when everyone else is believing. Right? Everyone else is um, walking your path. Um, but one thing my, my study Bible points out is you have to keep your faith firm even when it's not popular to follow Christ. Right? Even when everybody else, everyone else is not doing it, you have to keep your faith firm and keep on believing, keep on serving. That's important. Yeah. Very important. <clears throat> Stay with that. And, and even though, all right, so I'll just we'll make the last couple closing remarks, but um, I just notice how God didn't, didn't, um, keep himself from showing himself unto them, knowing that they wasn't going to receive him. He still shows himself to them. And that's still him working on fulfilling the scripture. Every ear has to hear the gospel. Every ear has to experience Jesus, whether or not they receive him, that's up to them, but it's still his job and our jobs now, since the Holy spirit has been dispersed for us to share this word of God to any and everyone. It's not our job to try to like punch him in the head and make him believe but we just got to do the seed. We got to plant the seed and allow That's God, that. plant the seed, do the watering and allow God to do the increase. Of the increase. Okay. Yeah. And, and two more things before you do your, your close out. 
Um, it's important when you're studying to, to pay attention to location, as Gio was saying, right? And make note of that. So uh, Cana and Galilee, you want to note that that was the first time that Jesus revealed his glory, right? When he performed that miracle. And the second thing is uh, Capernaum. Um, know that that was the home base for Jesus's ministry in Galilee, right? So always pay attention to location. Sometimes you want to go even outside of the Bible and look those things up and see what the the, the geographic location was, what what it was like. So you get a you paint a full picture, right? Make sense? Yeah. Pray. Um. Just pray out, and then I'll do my intro. Sure, no problem. Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord God, as your word says, when two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst, Father. Continue to pour out unto us and give us revelation, Father God. We thank you, and may we continue to draw closer unto you as you draw closer unto us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, this is a wrap of another session of Bible studies with the old folks. Um, we'll be back next week. With John chapter um, three, uh, that's, that's 36 verses. So we're going to try to just get that in one video. If not, then it's just going to be two videos. But I hope you guys share this video. I hope you guys got something from it. Um, when you're watching, just, just kind of have a notepad with you to just write along and just jot down some notes. I'm doing the same. And just come along with on this journey with us, uh, with me, Jill, and Jave. That's it for the video, guys. Like, subscribe. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.